let's deal with the second problem first. We want to be able to launch the vault. We're going to do that in the update, and we're simply going to do if input dot get button down whenever we push down on space, then we are going to fire the ball. And we're going to do that how? Well, we need a ball object for one. Um, so when we spawn this, we might want to keep a reference to it. Or we could move this code to the ball script. If the ball is static and you're hitting space, then it fires itself. You know, you could really go either way here. And instantiate does return an object. So I guess right now we're going to assume we only ever have one ball. Um, that, again, you know, I should have picked a game that's slightly less juvenile. Um, the ball. So right now we only have a single ball object, and we're going to make sure that it's... We're going to explicitly set it to null. Actually not required, but it makes me feel better. Um, and the ball goes here. So now, if we hit space, we'll just... We're going to take this the, the dummy approach for now. Our ball is going to have a rigid body, and we're going to add force. And we're going to use the same sort of force as before, where we had 300F, 0, something like that. Um, but we have to couch, we want to couch this in if if we have uh, the ball. I'm actually going to go ahead and sit braces around here, even though it's just one line. Uh, we're going to want to add a little bit more. Now, theoretically, ah, ah, right. Instantiate actually returns a object, not a game object. Uh, object is just the base object type, but we know for a fact that what we're going to be getting here is a game object, so we should be able to do a uh, typecast. And, oh, right, the button isn't called space, it's called jump. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change it to, well, I'll just call it jump. Um, if I go into here, project setting, input, this is what I'm trying to use, because it's bound to space by default. But you know what, let's, let's rename it to um, launch ball, because that makes more sense, doesn't it? And we're going to use that here. If the launch ball button is pushed down, which happens to be mapped to space, then fire the ball. And now, we still can move the paddle anywhere we want, but if we hit space, then our ball gets to go again. All right, that's, that's pretty good. Now comes the trickier part. How do you get the ball to be attached to the paddle? Um, you actually can't do that directly right now, because the ball is a physics-enabled object. And to just have it move with the paddle would be incredibly artificial. Um, and so what we actually have to do is turn off the physics on the ball to be able to manipulate it in a sort of artificial way, which is like the sort of way that our, our paddle is moving. And there's a couple of different approaches we can do with that. Uh, what I think is going to be working just fine here is if in our ball prefab, let's turn on the in is kinematic option. Is kinematic. Kinematic objects don't listen to forces. If I try to launch the ball now, you can hear me hit the space bar. It's not going anywhere. We're still applying a force, but a kinematic object does not listen to forces. Um, it can't be it can't be pushed around in that manner. But this is how you can control it in a more logical manner without breaking the physics engine completely. So we're going to have it start as a kinematic object, and then as we move uh, left and right, we are going to want to move the ball with us, and we're going to rename this ball object. We're going to rename it to attached ball. That's the thing, we don't need to track all the balls in the game, we just need to track the ones that are attached to our paddle. And actually, once we've launched it, we're going to go ahead and set it to null. So you can only hit the space bar once, uh, which is actually a, a problem in our current implementation. Before I did this, you could just keep hitting space and it would keep adding this force every time you did that. But now it's just going to be a one-shot deal, we're going to launch the ball and do that. Um, but before it actually launches, before this force can be applied, we're going to have to... Um, set is kinematic to false. So this is going to make it a proper physics object again, then we're going to apply force, then we're going to forget about the ball altogether. And so now if I hit play, so it's still not attached to our paddle, but it's currently kinematic. If I hit space, it properly launches, and now it's once again a physics object. So simply the last step is we can actually move, we could do it a couple of different ways. I'm going to move this if attached ball outside of the input. I'm just going to change the, uh, the sort of stacking here. So if there's an attached ball, then we want to make sure that the position of the ball, what I should have done is actually just cache this rigid body. Um, well, let's talk about that. There's, this is slightly inefficient to keep doing it this way. Ideally, if you're going to be calling one of these many, many, many times, including your own, like if I was working on my own rigid body or my own, say, um, 
uh, transform. You actually want to try to cache these when you can. Uh, it apparently adds slight optimization. So I'm going to go ahead and go and create a rigid body, ball rigid body equals like that. And it's apparently slightly more optimized. You probably don't have to stress about this. And I've always said, well, not just me, of course, it's a, it's a famous programming line, but premature optimization is the root of all evil. Don't worry that too much about doing this, but it does make our code slightly shorter here. So if there's an attached ball, the attached ball dot, I think I can set the, um, the physics position. What is it called? I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh yeah, the rigid body's position is equal to my own transforms position. Um, well, it's actually just the X that I want to worry about. Can I just set the X? I don't think that I can. I don't think this works. Let's give it a try and see what happens. Oh, yeah, cannot return. Yeah, because X is is not a um, is not just a member variable. I think it's a, actually an, an accessor function. So, oh, set. It's set, isn't it? No. New x, new y. I'm trying to remember. I guess what we'll do is just set the position to be equal to our position um, plus this. In fact, if we're doing it every loop, we almost just don't need this line at all, actually. So let's get rid of this. We're going to set the ball. We're just going to create the ball prefab here, but then on every frame, we're going to update the position to exactly where we want it. And I think at this point, this will work. Move it around, and yeah, you can see it indeed follows our paddle around. It actually lags slightly behind, um, and the reason for that is the the physics engine and uh, the, the sort of regular input loops don't run on exactly the same frame. Um, I think maybe if we updated the position in a late update, that might work better. So the update runs once per frame, but I think it's at the start of the frame. And if we go late update, unless I'm wrong about that. Let's give that a try. I think this will run at the end of the frame and possibly give us something a little bit closer to what we want. I may be lying to you, though. Well, it still works, but on my screen, it still looks like the ball lags a little bit. Um, so the trick might be to actually do it in fixed update. I'm not going to stress about it right now, um, but you do want to look at the different update functions because they do slightly different things. They fire at slightly different times. And especially when you're talking about the physics part of the engine, um, there's definitely there's definitely a slight difference in how the update. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so now it moves around. Now it also launches, which is great, right? So now we can we can aim for whatever brick we want. Like if we want to kill this brick first, we can move over here and launch, and that works great. Looks like we're getting a bunch of errors though. Let's take a look at that. <clears throat> oh, of course, how silly of me. I'm grabbing the rigid body outside of my if statement. Obviously, we want to do it inside of here to make sure we actually have a valid attached ball. And we're going to hit play, and now it should run clean. In fact, it does. Good. We probably, when we launch the ball, actually want to be able to give it a little bit of English to start off with, to use that term again. Um, and I'm going to do that by paying attention to whether we're moving or not. And that's going to be used to give it a little bit of an extra or initial launch direction. Um, this add force, we're going to add a, an X component here. And we're going to base it exactly on whether we're moving horizontally or not. And something like this 